Okay, well, hi everyone. We're sharing this beautiful moment with the whole world. And yeah, someone came up with the title, A New Day Dawning, which is a good title for this uh, broadcast, this live stream. We were coming over today and and I think Frances added another word. She put a word in front of it. Forever a new day dawning. You were saying that it seems like with our ministry that every day is forever a new day dawning. And that's how it feels. It's very fresh. We don't know what's coming. But we do sometimes get some inklings and some some feelings about sharing and extending and and lately, we've been talking a lot about Christian mysticism, about leading a devoted life, just having your every moment of every day dedicated to, to worshiping God and extending the joy. Uh, Lisa's been, I can't say rediscovering, discovering the Bible for the first time. She was talking about Psalm 100, the Psalm of David's end. What was the make a joyful noise to the Lord <laughs> Psalm 100 it was beautiful and 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 I read the whole scripture the gospel this morning and I thought it was so beautiful because he says uh we are sheep in God's pasture and I thought that was so beautiful just you know that uh it's time to make a joyful no noise unto the Lord and just this bursting, it feels like with the worship service and yeah, Psalm 100. And shepherds, you know, a shepherd is just one who watches over the flock. Mm. And you were saying today, and Jesus is the good shepherd. You, If you're a sheep, I think you would want a good shepherd. <laughs> you don't want one that's kind of like a wayward, confused, <laughs> doubtful shepherd, but the good shepherd watches over the flock. I think it's interesting too with that metaphor of the of the shepherd and the sheep in the sense that that the good shepherd will go if he finds one of his sheep is missing. He will leave the entire flock to go out and find the one sheep that has wandered, the one sheep that has strayed. And that is just a great uh, metaphor for the idea that God loves us so much that, that that God always finds the lost sheep and brings them back into the family of God, which is part of being the uh, creation of God. So that's a beautiful reminder. Yeah. yeah, talking about the shepherd, I was thinking we have a movie in our collection called The Pilgrim's Progress. And at the later part of the movie where Jesus showed up and is called himself uh, the good shepherd. And he said, from now on, I will give you a map to the kingdom. And then he, after he said that he disappeared and the pilgrims were like, did he give you a map? No. Did he give you a map? No. So they went on. And then at some point they realized, oh, his word, his word is the map. His word is the map. Those are the moment-to-moment -moment instructions. These are our map. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really why, you know, our lives and our state of mind can forever be expanding because, because Jesus is putting his instruction moment-to-moment -to, -moment to us for us to forever get into this expansive, expansive state of mind. And that's why we're here to, to share, you know, what we receive. And we're just very joyful to keep fo following whatever word that, that um, he put in our mind. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting with this idea of shepherding or, or even teaching that we know from Jesus, a good teacher teaches to make himself or herself unnecessary. So if the goal of teaching is to make yourself, as you perceive yourself in this world, completely unnecessary, then the pressure's off. 
it's not like the spirit is saying, I want you to become somebody. It's the spirit saying, no, I want you to teach so that you merge in with the one, you merge in with the flow, you merge in into the joy, and then what you thought of as your personality self is, is no longer necessary, it's uh, insignificant, and you basically rest in the, the arms of heaven. You, you find who you are. And just recently, Francis and I were doing a, a broadcast, I think it was on Tuesday, with um, Russian-speaking students all over the world. Some were still in Russia, some were still in Ukraine, many were sprinkled in countries all over the world, but they were there sometimes with tears and happiness and gratitude. We were only on with them for an hour and a half, but by the end they were just, uh, they sent the host bunches of hearts and messages of love and gratitude. But one of the men came on and he was very sincere and he said, um, wow, it's been so helpful. I've been watching so many videos with, of course, with uh, Russian subtitles that Tanya and Dilya have put on to the videos. But I've been watching so many YouTube videos and I, I watch so many hours a day and so many emotions come up. And at some point, I just am so saturated that I feel like, is this even helpful? Am I becoming addicted to watching the videos? And then at other times comes up, I can do this. I can teach this. I am the teacher. And so he watches this fear of being addicted and this sense of, I can do this. I can do this better <laughs> uh, to going back and forth. And then he basically was very sincere, and he says, there's so many emotions that come up, though. I'm very grateful, but also I feel fear come up, and I feel doubt come up. And he was asking a question about teaching. Uh, what is it? Um, do I have to do it? Uh, is it a requirement? please talk about teaching. And I did say to him, I said, well, if somebody asked you a question and they ask you the question and you said, wait a moment, I need to think about that before answering. And I said, what if somebody asked you a question and you said, wait a moment, I need to teach about that for a second. They probably would look at you with strange face. Like, what are you talking about? But the only reason it's strange is because teaching has been equated with words and with behaviors and actions. And even teacher, the role of teacher seems to be different from the role of the student. But if you go deep enough into the teachings of what Jesus is teaching, he's saying the teacher and the student are the same. They're always on the same level, so you're always teaching, and you're always learning. And what he's really trying to get us to realize is we don't necessarily just teach with our words and our actions, but we teach with our attitude, and above all, we're teaching continuously with our thoughts. Our thoughts that are moving through our awareness are teaching the whole universe, what it is, and who we are. So any thoughts that we have is like broadcasting to the entire universe, who we think we are, and who we think everyone else is. And for most people, the problem is that they just realize they have a lot of body thoughts going through their mind, person thoughts. They're thinking about people. What do they think? What do they think of me? What do I think of them? <laughs> That's usually one every day. What do I think of them? <laughs> and Jesus is teaching us that we're, we're teaching based on our thoughts, not just the words we say or our actions. Thoughts, attitudes, words, actions, but ultimately thoughts. So if somebody asks you, what do you think about that? You could think right away, hmm, what do I think about that? What do I teach about that? What am I teaching myself as a mind, 
about myself. Am I teaching myself I'm a mind or a body? Am I teaching myself I'm a, a body or a spirit? And in, in the Bible, of course, Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, and might, and love your neighbor as yourself. But how can you love your neighbor as yourself if you don't know who you are? You're just going to misperceive your brother and sister and see them as flesh instead of spirit. We've been going over the, the Gospels, and that keeps coming up. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And you can't be both. It's not a mind-body-spirit combination. It's one or the other. You're either an eternal spirit or you are a, a temporary body. And what we teach, initially you say, wow, I have no idea how I'm going to teach that I'm a spirit. And of course you don't. <laughs> if, you, if you already knew how to teach that you're a spirit, you wouldn't need a world. <laughs> as a backdrop or classroom for purification, you would just be heavenly, <laughs> heavenly singing, <laughs> singing with God, eternal gratitude of creation and creator, just a happy forever tune. So, yeah, he, he was smiling at the end of what we talked about, but this is the beginning of humbleness. This is the beginning of humility. And oftentimes when people think of humility or humbleness, they think of it as kind of a put down. In fact, humility, which is actually a virtue, to, if, you're, if you have true humility, that's you're farther along spiritually than you could ever imagine yourself to be if you're humble and you have humility. But the ego is so afraid of true humility that it invented a word called humiliation. <laughs> and you see how the ego turns a virtue into, oh, the worst thing possible, humiliation. Uh, some of you know Richard Rohr, you know, he's a, a, a Christian mystic who's been teaching, we both, I think we both lived in the same house in about 11 years apart. He was, he had moved out to Albuquerque, but Oftentimes, Richard will talk about how he goes through the day and his prayer at the morning of, of every day is he's praying for humiliations. He's hoping to have some humiliations <laughs> during the day. Isn't that a, a different way? You would never hear that from a psychologist. <laughs> you know, what? You're praying for humiliations? You've got a bad case of unworthiness. You, you should... You should achieve more, conquer more, accumulate more, then you won't feel so humiliated. But Jesus is saying, actually, no, actually, Richard's on the right track, except he's using a word that is generally very unpopular to wake up in the morning and pray. He's praying for at least one humiliation per day. You see what he's doing <laughs> as he's waking up? Lord, humiliate me, uh, because, because he's actually wanting to be humble. You see that he's just a simple guy. He lives in a very, he lives in a simple little uh, house in Albuquerque, and he prays, and, and he prays, and he's reached the stage of his life. You know, I think he's probably over 70 now, where he's praying every day for just, please, Lord, grant me one humiliation, because for him, that just means one more speck of pride of ego pride is rinsed away when his ego goes, damn, <laughs> he's, his spirit inside is going, yay, yay, you, you got it, you got, you got a gift. So we just talk about being humble and, and really seeing that humility is a virtue. Humility is not a put down. Humility is not a sacrifice. Humility has no cost. When you have humbleness and humility, it has no cost because it's a state of your natural being. Because why? Because you were created by God. Even in the Bible, Jesus is, is 
turning to the people sometime after he's been teaching for a while, and he turns to them in a curious look on his face, and he says to the people, why do you call me good? And the people are amazed at the question, why do you call me good? Because they've been watching miracles and seeing this loving presence, and why do you call me good? He says, God is good. He points to the Creator, and, and that's the part of the humbleness is realizing that you didn't create yourself. You were actually created by a creator in spirit. Uh, the body is a projection, but the body is an image, and who you are is, is a creation of God. So you might say the whole journey in this world, even though it seems to have many uh, different pathways, the, the journey is to realize I am a child of God, and as the Bible says in Genesis, I was created in the likeness and the image of God. I was created of a like quality of God. I was created in the same spirit that God creates in. That's, that is worthy of being humble. That is worthy of, if I was going to worship one thing, I would worship the creator who, who created me in spirit. That's underneath all of our happy songs. That's underneath our joy. That's underneath our make a, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's one of the things I remember from the Bible it just stuck with me when I first heard it, because I thought, I can do that. We want to be able to jump into, I can do that. We don't want to be feeling like we're, we're not worthy of something, but we can make a joyful noise to the Lord. We can and we are. <laughs> That's why we're live streaming. Yeah, I think even today's uh, title of the session is the new day, and and it and it feels like we're in a new phase too. I uh, I feel like we've been, uh, you know, studying and in, in our own um, living in a mon monastic life. Uh, pretty quiet. And now it's time for that joyful no noise. And it's time for this opening of the heart, a deeper experience into the mystical. I feel like it's really, you know, we want to feel that passion and that joy in our heart and feel the presence of God uh, to know our creator. And even in that uh, Psalm 100, it talked about, you know, he's your creator and it's a time of thanksgiving, a time of being grateful and really feeling that love and feeling that presence and just that. I mean, nothing more that 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 sustains us. Yeah, I, I did hear we don't have any too much planned here, but we do have a, a Thanksgiving party planned, don't we, for for the twenty is it the twenty fourth? Yeah, I think we have a Thanksgiving team. I saw something, some Google Doc yesterday. Yeah, yeah. so we probably will share a joy, joyous day together, share a meal, maybe we'll have a dance party, have something to, uh, something gleeful and joyful on Thanksgiving. But But again, like Francis was saying, forever a new day dawning. Every day is a blooming day every day the the flowers are blooming the the trees are swaying and singing you know actually that sounds a little more like a walt disney movie but it's actually closer to uh heaven to to see that the things are all happening for you in a in a beautiful orchestration like in a disney movie we it does feel like when I come over here and I look around, it is like kind of a Disney movie with the colors, the bright colors, those poofy things outside. They, <laughs> you could just walk out and grab one and and just shake it over your your head and get get immersed in. Looks like a some kind of giant feather. feather. It's like a giant feather growing outside. <laughs> they're they're actually turning the camera around so we can see some of these. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And over the years, we've we've used a lot of different um, tools and, and meditations and music. We had a, a, a forgiveness program called Mystical Mind Training. And now we're starting to 
feel a swirl, not only with the new app and doing lots of lives and doing uh, worship services and, and singing and so forth, but um, we're actually looking at um, some new programs, right? Some, some online, using some of the, the things that we've just been sharing for years, but putting them out in kind of a way where people can be guided through some steps of undoing in in a very beautiful way. So that's kind of a new direction. Yeah, I think Eric's part of that team, uh, the new programs that we're putting together. Uh, uh, Laverne has been using the mystical teachings of Jesus and formulating something. So it's all kind of being born as we speak. And we're feeling really excited about because it's going to give people an opportunity to take like just programs instead of a two-year ministerial program. It'll be more of uh, the deeper teachings of Jesus going into the Bible, going into, uh, yeah, just more of the scripture and feeling the deeper teachings of Jesus together. And yeah, so we're excited because it's brand new. Everything's happening like really, really fast this new, like you said, every day is brand new. So it's like, okay, what's happening today? And, and so this new program, well, it's several, probably about four of them is what they might set up different programs. And yeah, so it's all just being born as we speak. It could be like taking like a four week class or a six week class or an eight week class on a particular topic that interests you. And for those that are here at La Casa that want to be part of it, you could be, that could be something to say, oh, as an intern, I want to be on, on the team making these new uh, courses. Uh, or we talked about actually doing some online retreats. So we're streaming right now to a number of platforms, but where people can sign up for an online retreat, it could involve prayers and meditations, it can involve teaching sessions around a particular topic, around holy relationship, around uh, true empathy, around um, living a devoted life, uh, discerning the voice of the Holy Spirit, as opposed to the other voice, that the voice of temptation and pride. And, and so there's ways to, to teach what you would learn. Because a lot of times people say to me, they say, how did it go for you in your life? And I guess once I realized that that teaching was thinking, teaching was not an activity of form, but it was actually thinking. And I realized, wow, I'm going to need a big transformation of consciousness to think and to teach only love, teach only love, for that is what you are. If you're accustomed to mixed teaching and thinking, which is what the human world and consciousness is about, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag of, of, of loving thoughts and hateful thoughts, joyful thoughts and fearful thoughts, gleeful thoughts and shameful thoughts, guilty thoughts. You know, it... It's a mix, but if you're going to teach what you would learn and teach only love, we actually had a center that I wrote on the blackboard when we first walked into our center in, in Utah on Camas. There was a blackboard in the kitchen. And maybe they used it to write down like menus or something, but I just wrote in chalk, teach only love. <laughs> Those are the three words I wrote. And it actually stayed that way for like 10 years until we sold the place. There still was the chalkboard with teach only love on it, the three words that I wrote. So if your goal is to teach only love, then that means you must treasure every opportunity, every single encounter, every single meeting, every single circumstance and event you have to start to realize is is given a new purpose to teach only love and when i would first start to accept invitations to travel around the united states i would go in one place to the next to the next mostly meeting people i had never met before so every day i was meeting a whole bunch full of new people and then a bunch of new ones the next day and they would ultimately invite me to their 
house or their church or their synagogue or or to go to a picnic together or take a walk by the water together or something. And what I realized was as soon as I began speaking where people were showing up, I did get a very little tape recorder. So I would just put down the tape recorder when we would all gather together and therefore it would be recorded. Yes, of course, the dog would come in and knock the tea over and you'd hear the flowers knocking over and you hear people coming to the door and being welcome. And so this was highly unedited, just one of those old tape recorders with batteries and the sound quality wasn't always the greatest. And sometimes you could hardly hear what was going on because everybody would get into a ruckus and the dog would knock something, you know, it would be like, but then I would I would go travel, 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 and, and I would come back with all these um, kind of cassette recordings in the early days. And then I would go through and I would edit them into a little teaching session. And then I would upload it as soon as I could, as soon as I got involved with the internet, I would upload it to the internet. And then people could hear the teachings. But it took me a long time to go through even those little cassettes and to edit them. But I got to hear everything that was spoken a second time. Once when it was coming through me with all the people and then when I was editing it. And then I would go up and check to make sure it was right on. So I'd hear it a third time. <laughs> and you see, this was an immersion for me into the teachings. It wasn't just reading something once through, but I was getting saturated with this new thought system. At the beginning, I was just nothing more than a, a beginning channel trying to let the, the Jesus speak through me, let the Holy Spirit come through me, bring a blessing, bring happiness, bring joy. That was my only focus, to show up and let the happiness come through in whatever way it does. But then when I would record it, edit, upload it, and hear it again, then I, it started to become more like, oh, okay. So this is a natural way of teaching. This is a natural way of thinking. And for most human beings, it does seem like an uphill climb because the conditioning of the ego is so thick. It's like a thick fog. It's it's a it's the mind is filled with pride and with temptations some of you were with me on the last um saturday where i talked about i used the movie of c.s lewis and you see after all those years of of training his mind by reading the classics and talking to people in oxford and going through the war world war one in france when he finally started to give himself over to the lord when he heard the words, I am the Lord, I am that I am, I am, then he became fearful because he had felt exposed with all of the pride that he had, all of the variations, the vacillations. When he finally gave himself over to God, he was faced with that. And that's the way it goes for human beings. You, you face your hidden pride, your hidden uh, secrets, you face your your hidden doubts, and that that then has to be grist for the mill. You're going to take that grain, which is distorted ego thoughts, and you're going to put them in the Holy Spirit's grinder and have the Holy Spirit grind that down into powder to make food <laughs> out of that grain. He takes those thoughts and they they're little grains, little wheat grains and little rice grains, crunch crunch, thoroughly crunched, powder, 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 and then finally the powder is useful to uh, make the bread, to get your daily bread. So that's kind of using a farming agricultural metaphor for how the Holy Spirit purifies, takes whatever we give and then grinds it down to powder and then the, the fruit, the, the bread comes from that. So we're we're excited about this uh, new, it's like a new flavor. We've been, we've had a flavor and now we've gone and got a new flavor <laughs> to make a joyful noise with the new flavor. And that's why we're, we're doing this now. We're just sharing. Yeah, yeah we just, I mean, even this morning as we were driving over here, I just have this feeling like 
oh my God, we can be so patient. We, we can trust so much because God is the one behind Jesus and God's voice is the one behind all of it, guiding us and, and we can afford eternal patience. Doesn't really matter what's happening. It's all good. It's this rinsing like a wave. We were talking about wave passing over the rock. Doesn't matter how the rock feels so hard and it just, there is a rinse and I can truly taste it in an experience feeling. It's all so, so good. It's all so good. And we can be so patient with the plan, with God's plan in this. And, and not really thinking too much about personal, what is that, what is me, my plan, my part, but just look at how you know our, our day unfolds without our own thinking and knowing ahead of time. It unfolds like such a big plan to benefit our one mind, truly, you know, we can say we're doing it to benefit the whole, but what is a whole except the mind that I'm connected to? That's why we're living in this forever newness because, because we're just being washed by this new instruction. And that's why we're so excited by, by this online course direction, not just so that it's in itself means anything, but it's, it's part of our life just letting our mind be rinsed by this new newness. Here we go again. We are going to be hand in hand and have a new team come together, immerse once again in these teachings, not just immerse in the listening, but also applying it as we're putting the course together, as we're splashing it out. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna be really practicing it put it into practice ourselves day in and day out so that we can see wow this is this what what the teaching is that comes through is so deep it's so deep it causes us to let go of absolutely everything that we're holding on to that does not serve us and that's so so deep and so so worthy of our whole devotion you know so that's why we're happy because we can't help it when we taste this expensiveness. It's like, yes, let's go. <laughs> it's beautiful because I just you saying the word humble. I, I mean, really, it's it's this. I don't know. I have no idea, and that's scary to the ego. But it's this opening of this vibrancy and aliveness and freshness and really opening up to be used by God to have the spirit use us and feel that love pour through us and love one another. But it's, it's this humbleness and defenselessness that, yeah, that is the joy that I don't need to know that he knows. And, it, you know, the fear comes in when we think we have to know, but this openness to say, you know, just use me, God, and I don't know the way and that Jesus, you lead the way. And just this opening into this new day. I mean, every day it is that way. I feel, I know my, that's how my life is. I I'm living this every night. You know, when I go to bed, I thank God just for the day that I had every day. Just thank you. You know, his plan is so glorious and my, and so in the morning it's like, I, I don't have another plan. And it's, it's opening up to watch and see how I can be truly helpful and how I can be used and the joy, you know, just even this thing that we're doing here in this moment. I mean, it is the joyful noise. There's a, there's an energy in our heart that is, I don't know, just radiating in that humbleness, you know, not knowing and to be shown. So I just, I just love that that's what my life is. It's not just talking about it. It's an experience of continual humility. You know, you never arrive. You know, it's this continually deepening experience of you show me God, you show me the way that we do actually become like little children and that we're so cared for uh, and so loved. And he wants us to sing of the good news and 
yeah, just, yeah, I just feel so grateful. It, it is a Thanksgiving, you know, a daily Thanksgiving of saying thank you for my life in me not knowing and knowing that your plan is perfect for my life. Yeah, every, every week we just pray to be shown. And so if you know, pray for a, a movie to all be shown the love and the depth of love beyond the world. So every week we ask people to, we put some themes out. Marina throws some themes out. What was our number one theme right now? It's something about devotion to living in the present moment, something like that. And that's a beautiful theme. It's not surprising me that out of five themes, that's the top vote getter at this point on Thursday. And we have our movie coming up in a couple days. So I've been praying and praying, okay, I need something that answers the call for devotion for living in the present moment. And the reason it's so important is because the present moment is where we find the humbleness. The present moment is when we where we find the humility. We don't find it when we look in our past. We find a mess when we look into our past. And when we look to the future, we find worry, anxiety, fear, doubt. And when people look at the world and imagine a future, they just go, not good. Please, please, Lord. I really want to know the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to know how to live in the moment. So maybe I'll give you a, just a brief little, a few parables about finding the present moment. I was traveling around the world with Francis, many, many countries, 44 countries around the world, around and around and around and around for years and years and round and round and round. And then um, in around, I think around 2010 or 11, I started to hear Jesus say two words in my mind, which I completely did not understand. He said, urban ministry. I said, urban ministry? What, what does urban ministry? Jesus, I've given talks in Paris and London. I've been in Shanghai, Beijing. I've been in Cape Town and Johannesburg. I've been in New York City in Los Angeles and Chicago, I have been around to all the major cities in the world, round and round and round and round. And he's like, urban ministry. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I've tried, <laughs> I tried my best. I like the rural places too, like you, the deserts, but I've been to the cities too. So finally, uh, came down here to Mexico. Usually I would just come down to pray and meditate by the ocean, actually. If all truth be told, I was over in, in uh, Puerto Vallarta, <laughs> sitting on the beach, <laughs> praying next to the ocean. And then we came down to do some a retreat in Guadalajara. We were invited to come do a retreat in two, two retreats in Guadalajara. So we came down, we did the first retreat. It was in an attitudinal hitting center that Jerry Jampolsky and Diane Cerenzioni had formed. Very vibrant, happy. Thank you. We love it. We love that you came, da, da, da. And then we said, okay, we're ready for the second one. And our host said, oops, I forgot to organize the second one. So we were like, you forgot? <laughs> you were going to do two? You did. One? He said, sorry. So we came up here to this area. We were down the road in Ahihik, and we were staying in a minister's house. And that's where... I was just praying, praying, and and I kept hearing urban ministry, urban ministry, and I'm like, what actually is an urban ministry? And Jesus said, this is it. I said, this? This is it, Mexico? Yes, this is it. So before I left to go back to the United States, I, I called a realtor and I said, would you have time on the way to the airport to show me one property that I happened to see when I opened the book after Jesus was telling me this is it. This is La Casa de Milagros. I, I came here and did a quick tour on my way to the airport. We got to the airport. We got bumped up to first class to the first row of the plane. That's pretty strange. It was you and I and Suzanne and then there was a one more seat 
in the front row of the plane, and the guy came in, sat down next to us, and fell asleep. So we were bub, 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 talking all the way up from here. We were going to Los Angeles. And then as the plane is coming down toward the Los Angeles runway, the guy who's sleeping, who we don't know, wakes up. And he's like, what are you guys talking about? Are you talking about a ministry in Mexico? We said, yeah. He said, I'm a minister. And I have a ministry in California and a ministry in Mexico. So here's my card. If you need anything, you can have your ministry. We were like, wow. So we came to La Casa, bumped up to first class. The guy who falls asleep wakes up on the, on the, as we're coming down landing and gives us this whole thing and says, here's my card. That was in 2013. So out of everyone in the ministry, um, I said, I think we're supposed to buy this place because Jesus, this is part of his urban ministry. It's kind of important. And they said, well, that's good, but there's only one problem, that we we barely, 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 if we have every bit of money that we have in the ministry, and we put it all together, we can buy this place empty with no furniture. <laughs> but that's that's irrational. You don't take everything. It would be like going to a gambling table and just putting everything you had and emptying out your pockets and your purse <laughs> to put it all on and, and saying, I'll take the crapshoot, I'll take, you know, B here now. <laughs> I'll take B4 or something. And then, so anyway, I even had friends uh, that were saying, it's too bad that we're not going to be able to get that place in Mexico. And I said, well, I don't know if it's too bad. It's like Jesus wants it. So he's in charge. And if he says, take everything you've got and buy a place in Mexico, it's his plan. You know, you don't say, I think we should wait a couple of years. You know, I am the Lord. <laughs> Mexico, now. Urban ministry. I've been talking to you for three years. So I said, so it's, uh, I may catch a little flack from the church members, but <laughs> we got to do this. So we did. We came down here. I, I came down first, and I was kind of walking around here, and it was bare. It was stripped. It was stripped bare. There was nothing, there was not any furniture to sit on. I could sit in the grass. And then little by little, people came to join me. And then once we started the community down here, that's when we began to discover the present moment because we'd say, we need a, a washing machine. We need a refrigerator. The electric's broken. The gate's not working. Um, this is, this appliance broke. That, you know, would be typical if you have a new house. You've got a lot of things breaking down. And we would go and we would meet our Mexican friends all around. And they introduced me to the Spanish phrase, manana, manana. <laughs> I, take, I take in the broken thing and they say, manana, manana. And I go. <laughs> and so it took us a, a couple years to realize that that there's an official translation of manana, manana, but actual, actually what they mean when they laugh and they go, manana, manana, they mean not now. <laughs> <laughs> now, once you figure that out, then it's better because you can go, oh, manana, manana, yes, not now, yes, yes, it's not now. And then Jesus said, now you've got manana, manana, and then you've got a, a aura, a aura, yeah. which is now. <laughs> So there's not now, and there's now. Not now is always something not to put your mind into, because not now means not now. It, like if you go to England and, and you give a broken appliance and you say, when can I pick it up? And if the, the craftsperson in England and the UK says, not now, you just probably look like, don't be so rude. <laughs> I asked you a question and you told me not now. But down here, they with a big smile on their face, manana, manana. After a while, manana, manana, okay, not now, not now. It's, 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 the script is written. <laughs> and you, you have no control over the script. So it's, it's either the script or it's not now. It's, or it's, that script means not now. It, and the aura is now. So what we did learn was we did learn 
to let go of form outcomes. I remember there was a time we have a house over there we call the temple and some workers of ours, what's his name, came early on, Jose and, and his, his son or some people came over to install a safe in the house. And I was like, how's it coming? Because I was drilling, banging, you know, trying to install a safe. And then in the middle of all of it, they came up and they said, oh, oops. I said, what's the oops about? I know the wall's cracking and I know it's a big job and dust is flying everywhere. What's the oops about? We locked the combination for the safe in the safe, inside the safe. <laughs> and Jesus is like, come to me. <laughs> come back to the present moment. <laughs> right? It's like, who locks a safe? I mean, wouldn't the first thing that you would do as you're installing a safe is take the combination out of the safe and don't close the door and lock it because you can't get in to the safe with the, without much work. But Jesus was like, come, come, let go. Don't try to figure out the world. You know, didn't we have lots of, we've had lots of lessons the last nine years of don't try to understand anything of this insane world. Come back to me. Trust me. Let go. Keep your faith in this moment and everything will be taken care of. And manana manana is just meaning with a smile on the face, let go of the script. Let go of the future. All the mystics and saints have been told the same thing when they pray. Stay present. The key is to stay present. So that's one thing we're excited about is, is even though we call it the new day and the new direction, this is forever the new day. It's forever uh, aura. It's forever the present moment. It's forever now. And that is the goal of all the mystics and saints. They will tell you so, was, is to be present. So that's, I think that's our spiel for today as far as live streaming. We have a beautiful community here that have been going through lots of healing and would like to talk to me about that, but that is is uh, not for live streaming. <laughs> so that's our our joy of the moment. And now we'll we'll kind of sink into our next phase. And uh, so yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, world, for joining us. <laughs>